Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So we are actually discussing uh, about that uh, fluidization process where that uh, uh, multi-phase systems are uh, you know uh, involving and in this lecture we will try to understand the uh, basic concepts of froth rotation. Uh, which is also comes under that fluidization uh, operation. In this case, uh, you will see that uh, particulate materials will be, you know, uh, separated uh, from the uh, slurry uh, in presence of uh, surfactant uh, uh, and also by aeration. So, here in this case, three phase will be, you know, uh, taking part. Uh, which will be you know uh, like gas, liquid and uh, uh, solid phase. This is solid phase will be you know added in the liquid or like you know as an application you can say that ore particles or ore that will be you know ground and making a slurry okay uh, with a specific size of that particles and then it will be you know uh, uh, fluidized in a uh, liquid medium uh, just by you know action of driving force of that you know gas uh, which will be continuously supplied from the bottom of a you know vessel in which that slurry processed to uh, separate that particulate materials. Uh, uh, now this uh, separation of this particulate materials will be based on that you know hydrophobic uh, or hydrophilic nature of that particles. Suppose there is a mixture of particles like you know that uh, uh, some will be hydrophobic and some will be hydrophilic. You know that what is hydrophobic? Hydrophobic means water uh, repellent whereas hydrophilic is water attractive. So whenever these uh, two types of materials will be uh, floated or you can say that it will be fluidized or being suspended by the action of gas uh, flow, uh, gas flow uh, where that gas will be you know uh, supplied as a dispersed phase of bubbles. But uh, these bubbles can be uh, you know uh, stabilized uh, just by adding some surfactants there or surface active agents there and whenever you are adding this surfect, uh, surface uh, active agents there you will see that surface tension will be reduced and because of that the uh, uh, you know uh, the size of that uh, you know bubble uh, which is actually formed just by supplying that gas through the distributor. And those uh, bubbles will be stabilized or uh, it will give you a certain size of that bubbles. And at the surface of the bubbles, uh, you will see that that hydro, uh, you know, phobic particles will be attaching on that, you know, uh, bubble surfaces. And those, you know, particles along with that bubbles will be going upward by that rising of that bubbles, uh, you know, because of their buoyancy effect. So, uh, in that case, that uh, particulate material which will be, you know, uh, hydrophobic in nature will be attaching to the bubble surface and then it will be going up. And in that case at the surface those particles will be you know separated. Now you will see that uh, whenever you are adding that surfactants there will be a formation of froth. There will be a certain amount of surfactant to be you know added. So you will see that whenever fluid will be flowing inside that uh, you know bed or mixing will happen that you will see that the formation of froth will be uh, you know uh, there. Uh, that formation of froth uh, that means there will be a particular uh, size of that bubbles will be formed and uh, along with that uh, you know uh, froth uh, you will see that that froth will carry that you know solid particles attaching on that uh, surface of that uh, you know bubbles. So uh, this is the process basically that froth flotation. So it is a process that selectively separates that materials based upon whether they are water repelling that means hydrophobic uh, or you know have an affinity for water it is called hydrophilic. The process of froth flotation is dependent upon the density of the material and its hydrophobic nature. Now you will see that uh, is, uh, this froth flotation is frequently employed for separation of solids encountered uh, particularly in the primary mineral and chemical industries and materials mined from uh, any deposit with the earth's crust usually represent a highly you know heterogeneous mixture of solidified phases. These are mostly crystalline and represent the various minerals. 
and uh, you will see that occasionally they are non crystalline some will be amorphous and such as for example coal glasses resins and opal and in that case this uh, based on this prop rotation uh, you will see that separation of that solid particles which will be hydrophobic nature uh, and it will be separated to get this valuable uh, you know uh, uh, value added you know product from those particles there so here in this figure you will see that in uh, you know representation of a froth rotation there you will see that in this case uh, you know air is supplied you know uh, uh, through a you know distributor here and uh, also uh, that distributor will be you know itself agitating uh, this uh, in this vessel uh, you know that whenever it will be agitating or rotating and uh, you will see that uh, at the same time simultaneously you know gas will be you know distributed through this uh, distributor come agitator and there uh, you know uh, bubbles or gas will be distributed as it is phosphorus of bubbles there and uh, you will see that uh, from that uh, you know uh, the formation of the bubbles you will see that at the bubble surface uh, you will see that uh, uh, the particles will be attaching on the surface of the bubbles from the slurry and whenever that bubbles will be uh, going upward you will see that uh, the bubbles will carry that solid particles and it will be you know uh, separated uh, the froth at this uh, surface like this and then uh, froth will be collected and from that froth you will see that uh, the solid particles will be you know separated whereas the hydrophilic particles those who are not going up uh, with that bubble you know attached on the surface those will be you know uh, coming out uh, you know uh, at the bottom as a trailing so this is the basic uh, structure here so here uh, in the feed uh, systems will uh, you know allow to uh, feed that slurry here and uh, you will see that uh, to form that uh, bubbles it will be supplied to the distributor now in this case sometimes that arrangement will be different to supply that gas uh, to form that bubbles uh, it may be from the bottom itself from the compressor it will be supplied whereas here in this uh, case it will be you know that uh, maybe you know the from the upper uh, part of this vessel you will see that through a you know uh, a pipe and then uh, it will be supplied uh, at this bottom here also it can be possible so here either from the top or uh, bottom it can be possible to you know distribute that gas as it is possible of bubbles so here is a uh, basic structure of that froth rotation devices and in this case you will see that mechanism is that there will be mixer of mixer of hydrophilic and uh, hydrophobic particles uh, and water there now in this case you will see that uh, bubbles uh, those are forming uh, whenever it will be uh, uh, you know uh, moving upward they will carry that uh, hydrophobic particles here from that um, uh, you know slurry of mixer of that hydrophilic and hydrophobic particles and it will be you know separated as a, a froth here whereas hydrophilic particles that will be coming downward as a trailing okay so this is the mechanism here now uh, for the solid particles to float you will see that their surfaces must be hydrophobic that is weighted only partially by water and hydrophobic solids due to incomplete weighting and uh, no spreading uh, uh, attached to the bubble surface so here this is the mechanism which particles will be you know hydrophilic which particles will be hydrophobic that can be you know identified or can be you know uh, assessed based on its contact angle of that solid particles with the liquid so that contact angle uh, can be represent here some uh, particles will be weakly hydrophobic in that case a small contact angle will be you know uh, there the, if it is less than 90 degree that contact angle how that contact angle that means here uh, you know solid particles uh, will be you know that uh, you know uh, solid materials uh, whenever you know liquid will be you know uh, placed on that solid material as a drop you will see that how angles will be forming so it will be called a contact angle you know that this uh, as, as per you know uh, picture shown here so when this contact angle theta will be less than 90 degree it will be called as you know uh, weakly uh, hydrophobic okay and uh, also a uh, strong hydrophobic will be when uh, this uh, contact angle will be greater than 90 degree so those who are you know uh, you know uh, you will see that uh, even uh, air bubble uh, you will see that uh, clinging to submerged uh, planar solids in that case you will see that 
weak uh, bubble adhesion small contact angle uh, it will uh, you know exhibit. So, in that case uh, few particles will be attaching whereas, a strong bubble adhesion that is large contact angle is greater than 90 degree that is many particle will be attached on this bubble surfaces. So, based on this contact angle you can say whether these particles will be attaching on the bubble surface or drop surface there. Okay. Now, here when the solid is highly hydrophobic, the contact angles are high that means the theta almost equal be equals to 90 degree or even greater than 90 degree. And hydrophobic particles immersed in aqueous solutions are more readily picked up by you know static bubbles contacted with the uh, solids if their hydrophobicity is higher. And for selective flotation. Uh, to be carried out there must be a difference in the degree of weighting and non weighting of the you know uh, solid components in the mixer ok. So, uh, here in this case you will see that uh, again that uh, whenever that uh, bubbles will be forming just by distributing it to the distributor uh, uh, in the slurry where that hydrophobic and hydrophilic uh, particles will be there. So, in that case this hydro uh, you know phobic particles how that will be attached to that bubble surface here like this. So, here uh, uh, that hydrophobic material uh, these are hydrophobic material it will be attached to this uh, in the bubble surface whereas, other particles will not be attaching to the bubble surface that will be you know seg segregating or it will be coming out from the bottom. So, in this case whenever bubbles will be arising you will see that those hydrophobic particles will be you know being carried out by this bubble and it will be separated at this froth and it will be taken out or collected uh, in a separate vessel. After that you will see that those particles will be you know washed or uh, separated in a, uh, uh, in a vessel as a hydrophobic material. Whereas, from the bottom of this you know uh, flotation cell you will see that uh, it will be collected as a hydrophilic material. So, in this way you can separate that hydrophilic and hydrophobic material by this froth flotation. Now, what are the overall steps of that particle flotation? You will see that introduction of gas bubbles into the slurry first you have to do and then uh, collision between the you know gas bubbles and suspended matter uh, is to be floated. There will be certain collision between particle and uh, bubbles and uh, you will see that hydro uh, phobic particles will be uh, attaching on the surface of the bubble after collision. Now, attachment of that fine bubbles to that surface of the suspended matter will be there and after that you will see that collision between gas attached suspended particles with the formation of agglomerates there. So, whenever you will see that more than one particles will be you know attaching on the surface of the uh, bubbles there will be an agglomeration formation and then at entrapment of more gas bubbles in the agglomerates. You will see that that during that agglomeration formation inside that agglomeration there will be a bubble. So, that bubbles whenever it will be moving upward rise uh, to that you know surface of that you will see that, you will see that uh, it will be you know then uh, uh, bursting in that you know uh, upper surface of that you know flotation uh, uh, you know vessel and then that solid particles will be you know taken out from that you know from the top of that surface of that vessel. So, this is the step here you can say that uh, gas bubbles to be introduction uh, introduced and then collision will happen and then attachment will happen after that you know agglomeration will happen after agglomeration you will see that the bubble uh, will try to go up and then those agglomerated particles will be separated at the surface. This is the overall step of particle flotation. And what are the key design variables for this you know uh, uh, flotation systems to get that you know uh, better efficiency there. So, key design variables in the system that controlling efficiency of the flotation uh, are as like this you know first gas input rate what would be the gas input rate that means what is the gas velocity gas flow rate that will be maintained that you have to you know estimate or you have to uh, take in care and volume of gas entrained per unit volume of liquid that also you have to uh, note down what the gas hold up it is called what the gas volume fraction out of that total gas liquid solid uh, you know mixer. So, that is called gas hold up that is also very important parameter uh, based on which that efficiency of the flotation will be depending on. And uh, also uh, bubble size distribution and degree of dispersion is also important there whenever that you are going to separate that particles they are uh, what will be the size of the bubbles? The smaller size bubbles will give you the uh, you know more surface area on which that more particles can be you know attached on it. Also you will see that uh, 
uh, whether this bubble size distribution will be wider or uniform that is also more important case. When uh, you are getting more uniform bubble size that means narrow bubble size distribution there you will uh, have that more efficient operation of that froth rotation. Also surface properties of the suspended matter is also more important whether it is hydrophilic or hydrophobic that you have to know on what a degree of hydrophilicity or hydrophobicity that you have to uh, consider to uh, you know design that you know protection system. And also uh, your hydraulic design of the your protection chamber you will see that uh, what are the different hydro uh, hydrodynamic whether 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 these uh, bubbles or particles will be well mixed or not or uh, is there any you know stagnation region or not. Uh, also uh, you will see that uh, uh, is there any uh, pressure difference frictional dif uh, uh, pressure or is there any drug force high drug force acting between particles and you know solid particle what are the size of the uh, you know particle that you have to consider here. Also concentration and type of dissolved materials, what type of uh, you know materials that you are using whether it will be dissolving or what concentration of that particles to be maintained so that it can be you know forming that you know uh, agglomeration beyond that uh, there may not be a formation of agglomeration or that attachment of the particles on the surface of the bubble. And also you will see that what type of you know agents that you have to use whether it is surface, surface uh, you know modifying agents or other uh, you know surface active agents or not. So in that case uh, some you know uh, surfactant uh, or uh, you know surface uh, you know active agents that you have to use so that that uh, solid particles can be easily attached on the surface of the you know bubble. So those type of you know uh, materials to be considered and their concentration. And also you have to maintain at a certain you know pH value whenever you are going to operate that froth protection at high pH it will be uh, uh, you know operated or give your better efficiency or not or lower uh, pH value it will be. Sometimes you know some material characteristics that also be affected by that you know pH regulation there inside the bed. So accordingly that you have to use what type of chemicals to be used whether it will be you know uh, uh, active on uh, you know lower pH or higher pH there. Also at a certain temperature that you have to at higher temperature that froth protection cannot be possible sometimes because at higher froth protection you will see that froth may not be you know stabilized there. And also residence time of that materials or uh, gas bubbles uh, also important there. Uh, more residence time of the bubbles would give you that you know mixing but uh, whereas uh, you know bubbles would be rising uh, in this uh, you know uh, flotation systems uh, along with that particles there residence time should be as low as possible there. Otherwise you will see there will be more collision happens there and due to which that may be you know uh, separation of those particles will be hindering. So these are the things that, uh, that you have to remember uh, for this froth rotation. And also to float particles uh, why a chemical reagent is required sometimes uh, to get that better uh, uh, you know separation you have to add some you know floating agents or chemical reagents there. In that case if the surface of the solid uh, which is to be floated that does not possess the required hydrophobic characteristics uh, that means material it must be made to acquire hydrophobicity by treatment with specific chemical reagents. So that you have to use some chemical reagents which will modify the surface of the material to uh, uh, you know uh, get it that uh, you know uh, required degree of hydrophobicity there so that that separation will be easier. The action of these reagents is at the mineral surface or in some cases in the solution in which uh, the ore is, uh, will be you know uh, pulped or making a you know uh, you will see that uh, uh, slurry there. There is a interactions of that reagents on the surface called surface chemical reactions. So anybody that uh, surface active agents to be used there you will see that that surface active agents will be you know uh, uh, reacting on the surface of that you know solid. And uh, because of that reactions you will see that you will see that uh, the surfactants that act at the surface uh, uh, you know as a you know adsorption. 
So, uh, so there will be an adsorption reaction uh, will happen at the surface and because of which you will see that that hydrophobicity degree of hydrophobicity will increase. So, here the whenever chemical reagents will be added that uh, will be acting or will be reacting with the you know uh, surface of the solid and it will give you that better adsorption capability. So, uh, this adsorption capability will give you that better attachment of that you know uh, uh, solid material with the surface of the bubbles. Okay. So, in that way you can uh, have that you know uh, better efficiency of that you know flotation uh, for the separation of the particles. So, that is why chemical reagents is required. Now, uh, chemical reagents sometimes it will be work as a collectors, it will be a, a better term which is used as a collectors. The reagents which are used to make that mineral surface hydrophobic are called collectors. So, called as uh, uh, so called as uh, they collect minerals or particles from the ore and are as a class of surfactants. So, it is called collectors. So, they act by interacting at the mineral surface by adsorption or by chemical reaction. The specific compound used depends upon the nature of the mineral chemistry of the flotation pulp and several other chemical factors. And then uh, another term it is called frothers. This is also one important you know chemical agents. And here in this case in froth flotation you will see that an addition of this another surfactant acting as frother is usually needed. In the in this case the basic function of the frother is to produce a swarm of air bubbles which remain sufficiently stable for the hydrophobic mineral particles which is to be you know uh, captured by them. So, when the pulp or slurry within the cell becomes adequately aerated this is that means ana bubbles will be formed the hydrophobic uh, you know solid particles will attach to this air bubble surface and are bound by them to the surface of the so, the frother collector interactions that will strongly you know affect the degree of you know froth stabilization which is uh, you know uh, of course desired for this you know froth protection system. So, frother is basically a you know surfactant another type of surfactant which will give you the more froth uh, uh, to produce a swarm of bubbles there. Then Another uh, agents it is called modulating agents in addition to that collectors uh, and frothers that is generally surfactants. The flotation process is controlled by uh, certain inorganic or organic agents which is called modulating agents ok also known as modifying or regulating agents. There are three main class of modulating agents are there it is called activators some are called depressants another uh, is called pH regulators. So, where activators you will see that uh, the chemical compounds uh, which will uh, interact at the mineral surface will altering its chemical nature to promote its interaction with the collector. And for certain minerals pretreatment with an activator is necessary for the you know collector mineral introduction to occur. And depressants uh, these are chemical compounds which alter the mineral surface to prevent or hinder the action of collectors. So, in this case they are required to depress uh, you know uh, certain minerals uh, to promote the selective flotation of desired minerals. Uh, uh, here in this case control of depressant concentration is an uh, you know important parameter in selective flotation. Whereas, the pH regulator uh, pH regulator in a case of flotation is often critical which is actually used to determine the selective separation of minerals. In this case the control of pH is uh, achieved by a variety of uh, bases uh, and acids. Uh, the most common which are being used it is called soda ash that is called sodium carbonate or lime that is called calcium oxide. To raise the pH and uh, also to you know uh, lower the pH you will see that uh, sulfuric acid you have to you know use for that. So, it is also sometimes required to you know this type of you know modulating agents to regulate the selective uh, separation of the particles from the mixer by this froth rotation. You will see that uh, uh, in addition to this reagents uh, 
uh, there will be you know uh, certain you know uh, you know uh, reagents uh, another type of reagents that may directly control the flotation which are used in the treatment of uh, you know flotation tailings that means those who are hydrophilic those who are coming at uh, from the bottom of this you know flotation vessel these are flocculants or flocculating agents they are also surfactants like collectors but their principal characteristics is the polymeric hydrocarbon chain which bridges you know together large number of fine particles producing an aggregate of solids which is called flux whereas you know you will see some inorganic compounds which cause particles in a liquid to you know curdle and uh, clot together those are called coagulants the particles stay suspended in water rather than settling because they carry surface electrical charges that you know mutually repel each other so in that case the coagulants uh, you will see that uh, carry the opposite charges to the particles and uh, uh, cause the you know charge to uh, destabilize when added to the water and this will result in the particles you know uh, cleaving together so uh, these are you know coagulants so among the common coagulants some are lime potash alum potassium aluminum sulfate and ferric sulfate so these are also important in froth flotations and the components of a flotation system those are some components in the flotation system that you have to uh, know those are the basic understanding so one first is that flotation cell there may be all the different types of flotation cells are uh, available in the market and uh, it is designed based on uh, just considering all those you know surface active agents char characteristics of the material even uh, you will see that uh, flow rate of the gas even uh, you can say the concentration of the you know surface active agents even other you know geometrical shape that you have to consider so in that case uh, this flotation cells there are different types of flotation cells available uh, specific designs also available to give uh, uh, to to you know to get a specific you know yield of that you know separation process so here one component is it called uh, you know flotation cell sometimes you will see that uh, instead of cell it may be you know as a column so it will be called flotation column so they are also uh, from that uh, you know uh, column from the bottom side of that column the gas uh, will be distributed or air will be distributed as a dispersed phase of bubbles uh, uh, whereas in the column there will be a slurry of that you know specific side of the particles along with that surface active agents like collectors or frothers okay are also modulating agents so whenever that uh, you know gas or air will be you know uh, supplied from the bottom of that column uh, through the distributor gas distributor the air will be you know distributed inside the column as a dispersed phase of bubbles and those bubbles will carry that hydrophobic materials uh, based on that you know operating uh, you know conditions of those you know variables uh, that is concentration gas flow rate that slurry concentration even uh, you will see that distributor type all those based on who is that you know solid particles will be separated by that rise of that uh, you know bubbles through the column and then it will be separated from the top of the column which will be collected as a concentrate so this is the component that is called flotation cell so this is basically a container with an impeller or an aeration device uh, which is capable of keeping the solids in suspension and providing aeration for frequent air bubble particle uh, you know collisions so it is required that getting that collision between bubbles and particles otherwise it will not be attaching so for that there will be certain you know operating conditions to be required to get this attachment of that you know uh, particles on the surface of the bubble and then air which is to be supplied from the bottom or from the top of that bubbles uh, from top of this vessel uh, through the mechanical uh, provision like a distributor okay and then uh, it will be you know sprayed or mixed inside that you know vessel either by impeller or you know uh, uh, distributor come impeller that is conjugated system uh, in that case this uh, air will be you know injected under pressure into the pulp uh, uh, here in this case in amounts equivalent to 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 cell volume per minute like this 
and feed as a mixer of solids to be separated which is to be separated and it will be suspended in water at usually about 1 is to 3 solids to water by weight and referred to as flotation pulp. And uh, also another component is called min uh, mineralized froth or uh, float product. In this case hydrophobic uh, you know solid particles attached to air bubbles and are beyond and, and are uh, you know uh, uh, you know bound by this uh, to the surface of the suspension and agglomerated air bubbles with those solids particles you know constitute a mineralized froth and this builds up a top uh, the pulp and you know overflows the leap of the flotation cell. And this material represents the separated particles and is called the float product. So, this float product is one of the uh, component uh, uh, for this flotation system. And then other components like regulating or modulating agents like ions such as hydrogen ion, hydroxyl ion to control that pH, dissolve oxidizing species like RS, hydrocarbon, cyanide and metal ions that is derived from partial dissolution of you know uh, some solids or added purposely to act as dis, uh, depressants and activators. Also you will see that specifically added organic compounds uh, for depressing or activating action. So these are called regulating or modulating agents. And then another component that is surfactants, the minimum of two are usually required here, collector and frother. These reagents are added in quantities of 0.05 to 100 gram per ton of solids uh, or 0.02 to 0, uh, th uh, uh, 35 you know, ppm of the pulp or assuming molecular weight of 200 concentrations of 10 to the power minus 7 to 10 to the power minus 5 molar. So, in this way this uh, uh, you know typical you know concentration that you can use for uh, use as surfactants there for the collecting agents. And also uh, another important whenever you are getting uh, this uh, float product uh, or after froth uh, protection if you separate those particles maybe you will see that along with that hydro uh, you know uh, phobic particles some hydrophilic particles also will come because of that you know operating condition of maybe higher gas flow rate or bigger size bubbles will carry that fine bubbles also uh, fine particles uh, at high flow rate they are at the top. So, in that case uh, maybe uh, you know uh, pure hydrophobic particles along with that some hydrophilic or other you know different types of particles will be you know uh, coming with the, uh, that bubbles uh, to the surface of that you know flotation vessels. So, in that case you have to consider what is the grade, grade means you know that in that mixture if you consider a certain uh, you know type of materials to be you know separated then you have to consider that material out of total material what will be the concentration. So, that will be considered as a grade. So, the grade of a material whether it is an ore or a concentrate or a tailing with respect to a given metallic element ok. This is basically a percentage content of this metal in the material thus a grade say 65.3 percent of lead means 65.3 percent of lead content in the you know uh, uh, product ok. And then recovery another important the recovery obtained in a particular separation process that denotes that proportion of the valuable components which is separated as a concentrate and it is expressed as percentage of that total metal content in the ore that is fed. Here in this recovery means what will be the amount of total materials fed in the flotation system, flotation cell after you know uh, froth flotation operation whatever you know particles for uh, you know different types of mixture of particles that you are getting in the concentrate from the top that overall you know concentrate amount, overall concentrate amount out of that total feed it will be regarded as a recovery. So, thus for example, you can say that if 100 percent metal like lead, copper, zinc, etc. mixer in the ore feed, the concentrate may represent that only 87 percent recovered metal and the rest 13 percent is lost in the tailing or is distributed among the other products of the separation. So, in this case 87 percent recovery will be there out of 100 percent of weight. 
then uh, another important whenever you are using this rotation system or rotation column or rotation cell uh, uh, that cell may be you know operated either bash wise or continuous wise so in that case rotation system sometimes you will see that rotation column there may be you know continuous operation in a uh, cell it will be you know bash wise so in bash flotation when all floatable particles are removed with the overflowing froth the suspension of that hydrophilic solids remaining in the cell constitutes the final tailing of the separation process. And in a continuous flotation process, you will see that there will be several individual cells will be joined together to form a multi component unit. This is sometimes referred as a bank of cells. And from each cell, uh, you will see that. Uh, in such a bank only a portion of floating solids is removed uh, to launder and then uh, intermediate uh, tailing is uh, you know discharged by an you know opening to the next cell. So, in this way you can uh, uh, you know operate uh, whether this separation of these particles to be continued as a bash wise or continuously. Now, examples of industrial separations by flotation, some examples are given here like sulphide mineral separation. Now, separations of all sulphide minerals from the ores by flotation can be done. In this case, sulphide separation from ores containing dolomite guns minerals by ethyl or profile genthate surfactant as a collector. Also, separation of relatively coarsely liberated galena and sphalerite using cyanide as a diffracent and copper sulphate as an activator under alkaline pH 8 to 10 and one of the short chain alcohols or low molecular weight uh, poly uh, oxypropylene or it is sometimes called uh, uh, Dow froth 250 as a frother which is being used. So, in this case you can separate that you know sulphide uh, you know materials from the sulphide ores. Ores like like lead zinc ores, there also you can separate you know lead minerals from this ores where in this uh, you know uh, lead zinc ores it is called galena lead sulphide as it will be there uh, you know cerocyte or lead carbonate where 83.5 percent lead will be there and also you will see that only site uh, you know there uh, lead sulphate where 73.6 percent lead will be there. Less common are the complex sulphides of uh, you know, lead and antimony, lead and arsenic and then lead and bismuth. Uh, also you can say the uh, crocoid and also lead chromate. These are actually uh, common you know ores of that lead zinc ores. Here also you can separate this you know uh, available old mat uh, ore materials by this froth protection. Some other uh, copper ores maybe you know that copper sulphides even you will see that uh, uh, copper uh, uh, sulphide, ferrous sulphide, you will see that uh, hornite sulphide, you will see that you know some other complex sulphide, you know anarzite, you know stenite and you know uh, uh, tetrahydrite, uh, some you know uh, copper and uh, 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 you know antimony and sulphur complexes. Those are you know copper ores These are shown in this you know slide. Those you know copper ores are being you know ground and then uh, it will be you know uh, processed in the froth rotation column to separate that different valuable uh, copper or uh, lead uh, you know minerals by flotation. And also separation of the superficially oxidized and uh, you know oxide type minerals by this froth protection. Also there are some other application like separation of the non-metallic industrial minerals like fluorospar, uh, you know uh, silite, even barites, uh, even uh, phosphates for example, apatite. These are the you know uh, materials uh, you can separate it by this froth protection. Even uh, you can separate that uh, uh, soluble salts from uh, you know saturated brines also by this froth protection. Here some example it is given. Even separation of naturally hydrophobic minerals like coal is one of the you know naturally hydrophobic minerals that is now concentrated on a very large scale by flotation. 
Some non-mineral applications of flotation like to separate suspended solids in wastewater treatment to remove dissolved heavy metals from effluents, application of flotation for de-inking in the recycled paper industry, even recovery of bitumen from oil sand that occurring in you know Alberta and Canada like this. Then one of the important you know aspects that you have to you know uh, know how to analyze that flotation uh, process or uh, what will be the kinetics of that flotation process that means what fraction of recovery can be you know obtained by this flotation process and how to assess this. So, as we have already uh, discussed uh, in the earlier lecture that separation of minerals by flotation that involves selective concentration of hydrophobic minerals uh, uh, in the froth, the selectivity is based on the weightability differences of the treated minerals with only hydrophobic particles that is being able to attach to the bubbles. And the process is accomplished in a flotation cell and the overall selectivity is determined by the difference in the flotation rates with which you know different mineral particles are carried over to uh, get that final product. So, this is the you know mechanism by which you can get that you know separation of that hydrophobic materials. Now, this flotation kinetics, what is that flotation kinetics? You know, you will see that generally uh, froth flotation kinetics involve several mass uh, transfer processes. You will see that selective transfer of material from the slurry to the froth by particle bubble attachment and non-selective transfer of materials from the slurry to the froth by mechanical and hydraulic entrainment. And you will see that mechanically or hydraulically induced material transport from the froth over the cell lip into the concentrated products. So, this is the main you know transport of that solid particles. Now, in this case the first process is the main part of the flotation. In this case the step occurs in which zone referred to as collective zone. So, the flotation kinetics is basically the rate at which you can say that selective transfer of that material from the slurry to the froth by particle bubble attachment that occurs in the collection zone. So, in the next uh, slide the kinetics is uh, described like this here. If you consider that flotation kinetics which would be resembles the chemical kinetics that you have I think already aware of that how that chemical kinetics to be represented. Suppose A and B two reactants are reacting with each other and giving the product C then uh, the chemical kinetics uh, uh, can be you know uh, uh, you know assessed based on the you know interactions between that atoms, molecules or ions in the chemical reaction. So, in which case you will see that one of the reactants is in such a large excess that its concentration practically does not change with time. So, when the solvent serves as one of the reactants a first order equation adequately describes that rate of the reaction. So, this is the uh, you know concept of that chemical reaction. Now, this chemical reaction concepts can be used in this flotation systems also whereas here there will be no reaction but there will be a separation based on that you know collision between bubble and particles and then attachment of that you know particles with the bubble surface and then it will be coming out from the top and you will give you it will give you the product. So, here instead of reactions it will be you know that the interaction between particles and bubbles there and based on which there will be a collection of that particles at the top of that flotation cell. So, this mechanism will be applied to assess that flotation kinetics. So, let us consider here that in a flotation process mineral particles collide with bubbles. Now, flotation kinetics thus deals with the interaction between particles and bubbles. The particles are classified as floatable if they successfully attach to air bubbles and are removed with them from the pulp. So, in this case we can write that solid particles plus bubble that will give you the product of particle bubble agglomerate at the surface. So, this equation we can write here in the slide shown and the rate of removal of that solid particles from a cell it is basically second order you know interaction with respect to the concentration of those particles and bubbles. But if it is assumed that the bubble surface is in excess 
of course bubble surface will be is in excess that means huge number of bubbles will be produced. Then the rate equation can be reduced to a first order you know reaction. So, commonly the general rate equation for uh, you know uh, that expressing that you know reaction can be expressed by this equation number here 3 it is shown. So, where n will be is equal to you know first order reaction and solid particle concentration is equal to C. Okay. And uh, next for solid particles concentration where C is equal to C0 that means initially at time is equal to 0 and integration will give you this equation number 4 like C is equal to C0 into e to the power minus kT where C is the floatable mineral concentration remaining in a cell at time t and k is the flotation rate constant which is the dimensions which has the dimensions of reciprocal of time. For graphical representation this equation 4 is commonly written as like this from this equation number 4 you can write by this equation number 5. So, and since recovery r is defined as here recovery is defined as C0 minus C by C0. C0 is the initial concentration and C is the concentration at a particular time. Then equation 4 will become R will be equal to 1 minus C to the power minus kT. Letting R will be equal to R infinity at T is equal to infinity when at infinite time that recovery will be you know considered that recovery will be represented by r infinity. So, in that case it will be a 1 that means here uh, you will see that uh, the fraction that is recovery fraction will be 1 there. So, in that case uh, we can say that that r will be equal to r infinity into 1 minus e to the power minus kT. So, in the flotation kinetic equations k is a complex function involving among other things particle and bubble sizes, reagent concentration and flotation cell hydrodynamics. So, here this rate equation is basically this kinetic equation r will be equal to r infinity into 1 minus e to the power minus kT. So, in this case one of the important parameter is k, k is called flotation rate constant and this flotation rate constant depends on you will see that the particle size depends on flow rate depends on you know that uh, other you know material material characteristics even cell hydrodynamics also even you can say that uh, bubble uh, sizes bubble characteristics um, also you will say that uh, that distribution of the bubble so although it is generally accepted that flotation recovery follows that first order kinetics experimental evidence suggests that the order of the process may vary. So, here in this case we are getting this equation number 7 as the kinetic equation where r represents the cumulative fractional recovery at time t and r infinity is the maximum fractional recovery and k is the flotation rate constant which can be expressed graphically by this where here r recovery with respect to time will be you know represented by a you know cumulative fractional recovery whereas you will get that where there will be no change of you know concentration of that recovery material there it will be coming as you know constant value and it is the maximum that is represented by r infinity ok. Now, let us uh, do an example for this you know flotation kinetics uh, theory here. Let us consider that a froth flotation experiment that is conduct conducted to recover the graphite flakes by flotation at air velocity of 1.05 meter per second with 6 molar sodium chloride solution at steady state condition. From the experimental results it was seen that with respect to time there are various you know recovery fractions are in the uh, table. In this case you have to find the what is the flotation rate constant ok. So, here in this case uh, what is that flotation rate constant? Uh, protection uh, 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 you know kinetic equation is that r will be equal to r infinity into 1 minus e to the power minus kT. The maximum fractional recovery is here given at time 30 minutes it will come as 
0.93. So, here in this case we can write ln 1 minus r by r infinity that will be equal to minus k t. So, in this case uh, we are having this equation okay, with respect to time how that 1 minus r by r infinity of its logarithm will be changing with respect to time whereas k will be constant rotation rate constant. So, we can make a table like this what is the time and corresponding uh, what is the recovery value and what is the r by r infinity, r infinity value and then ln of uh, 1 minus r by r infinity as per this equation here. After that you can uh, you know make a uh, you know plot here like this with respect to uh, t uh, here uh, in lx uh, you know that y axis ln of 1 minus r by r infinity here and then you will get a uh, you know straight line since it is a you know that uh, straight line equation ok and then uh, you will see that there will be a slope of negative and which will give you the you know rate constant here ok. So, this rate constant it is coming around you know that 0 0.23. Okay. So, I think you understood this uh, you know problem that uh, how that recovery will be changing with respect to time in a prop rotation for this recovery of that you know graphite flake and you have to you have to measure that graphite flake concentration and then you have to find it out what will be the you know recovery portion and out of that uh, you know uh, total feed and out of which you have to get that fraction and with respect to fraction what will be that and what will be the cumulative fraction and then you have to you know get what will be the as per that uh, kinetic equation then you have to find out what will be the r infinity what will be the you know r value with respect to time and then plot it you will get this rate constant ok. So, I think uh, you understood that basic concept of that froth rotation where the application of that froth rotation and how that froth rotation can be assessed by this kinetic equation. So, in the next uh, lecture we will try to you know uh, uh, start with uh, another module that is called separation uh, of that solid materials uh, from the mixture and how it can be uh, done and uh, in the next lecture in the module of that separation. Uh, it will be a, a mechanism of separation like separation of particles by the size and what are the equipments uh, generally shipping and screening will be you know uh, uh, you know assessed based on its you know that governing equation from the mass balance and how that uh, you know efficiency of that screening or effectiveness of the screening or shipping can be assessed uh, for this separation of the particles that will be discussed in the next lecture. So, thank you. Have a nice day.